Well, uh, you know, basically what you do in research, and, the, and, that, and that includes this, where you, you look at the patients that have a, the disease and you look for something that's different. And uh, you really have to look everywhere and not, and not get too constrained about your ideas about what might be wrong. And uh, there are a lot of neurological problems that these patients have, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the problem's in the brain. And um, one of the areas that we have found that there's a lot of differences that is in all the different metabolites. So your basic style that you use is, you, I mean, I often think of it as a thread. There's something wrong with the metabolism. Okay, why is it wrong? And you just keep asking questions and trying to sort out what's wrong. And that's what's happening. And uh, we're uncovering an awful lot of things about the metabolism. It explains an awful lot of the problems. And, uh, and in fact, as we look at uh, th those metabolites and, and look at the symptoms, uh, we can explain almost all of the symptoms that uh, chronic fatigue syndrome patients have. What we have to figure out is, why is the metabolism off? And we have ideas about that, and, and we're trying to test that. Um, what we also do is try to develop new instrumentation. So uh, that is, if we have some ideas and we have no way to measure that, then we say, okay, we'll build, in it. We'll build a technology that will allow us to do that. So one of the people that was in the laboratory, for example, uh, has made a, a small needle that is so small that it can uh, not only penetrate a cell, but it can go into the mitochondria. And then we can actually inject things into the mitochondria. So if we have an idea that there's something wrong in the mitochondria, it's a real problem. How do you get it in? And it, uh, you can't just add it to the cells or take a pill. <laughs> Does it get into the mitochondria? So uh, we're going to do a collaboration. He's in Santa Cruz. And uh, we, we think we understand some of the metabolites that are a real problem uh, for the mitochondria. Mitochondria, I don't think, are defective. So if you do a standard defective assay on them, you'll find that they're normal. No, there's something else going on that makes them abnormal in the context of the disease and the context of the, of the of living cells. Some people take the cells out and then they put them in other things and then they look normal. Yeah, because they are normal. You can make them normal, but they're not normal in the patient, I think, and that's the problem. So we have some ideas of what may, what may be there, and we would like to then, we'll, we'll simply inject things and see if we can actually repair um, uh, what we'd like to be able to do is to test, do assays and test things on the cell culture so we don't test it on patients. There's a lot of things we can't do to patients. And we want a fast assay, and that's what we're trying to develop some, uh, we do a lot of what's called nanofabrication here. Uh, we have a nanofabrication facility downstairs. So they, we, we, you know, make, it's the same technology that makes computer chips. So we can make very tiny instruments. We also have, uh, ways that we use inkjet printing and 3D and 2D inkjet and we actually we actually print our instruments and so we can actually make and we can also print the electrical circuits so instead of doing wiring di you know diagrams and soldering we simply print it and it makes the instruments extremely cheap and as a result of that very inexpensive assays so we've been very, very focused on it, making everything very inexpensive. Uh, because it's the money that seems to have a big impact and, 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 and be error. It's, it's a barrier to research, it's also a barrier to the patients. So everything we do is to, we try to make very inexpensive. So one of our little instruments is using a, a magnetic field testing and it costs five cents an assay. And uh, we, we like to get it down to below five cents try to go to under a penny for an assay. Well, this will have a major impact on how it gets used and, and, and also on the patients. So that's something we're very, very good at doing. And we have a group of people here that are very good at computational analysis. There are people that are, uh, you said in a meeting, well, there's a couple of those people, young people are engineers. They don't know anything about medicine, but we work together. Uh, I, 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 we, we teach the engineers medicine and they teach us uh, electronic circuitry. And so it's a whole bunch of people teaching each other all the time. And that's how you get to be uh, feeling like there's nothing we can't do. 
we put together our scientific advisory board for the Open Medicine Foundation, I said, I want the most out-of-the-box thinkers I can, I've ever met. And so I made a list, I called them, they all said yes. <laughs> uh, even Jim Watson said yes, I've known him for years. Uh, and uh, he asked me two questions. He, said, he says, how much does NIH spend on this? I said, eh, mm, at most $5 million. Oh, okay. How many people have this? I said, oh, probably somewhere around two or three million people in the U.S. He says, okay, I'll help. <laughs> because he saw it was a tremendously underfunded disease. And, and, and most people who even know a little bit about the disease only know uh, often people that aren't very badly affected because they're the only people that are moving around. <laughs> and they seem, oh, they seem pretty healthy. But if you actually got to see someone who really is severe, and there's a large number of severes, they're totally isolated. Yeah. And they have very little support. And it's horrible disease. It's one of the most horrible diseases I've ever seen. So everything we try to do is try to make everything what I call on the fast track. Let's move quickly as we can. Let's cut corners if we can. We'll make some mistakes. We'll correct the mistakes. What we don't want to do is to do it under normal kind of uh, method, which is extremely slow. <clears throat> That's why we want to change the way we publish papers. That's the way we want to try to raise funding. Uh, NIH is extremely slow to get money from. Once you're in the cycle, you're okay but the cycle hasn't even started yet. And then once the announcement happens, you have to sit and write the grants. That will take several months. Then you have to put them in and wait, and it's, no, it's at least another nine months, maybe a year, before you actually see money. So we're talking another year and a half before we're gonna, gonna get money from the government to do this. Way too slow, way too slow. So um, we have to rely on, 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 uh, on public funding. And we try to try to do this as cheaply as we can, um, but some things just do cost money. And we try to collect as much data as we can because we don't know where to look. And, uh, and then we're going to try to make all this as publicly available as possible.